Hello, gang. Last time I brought you a list of top five tablets, a lot of it was, well, hooey. That's because many of the contenders for the iPad's crown were still yet to go on the market and undergo the withering tests. Our lab and your opinion. Well, that's all changed now, and the henchmen are lined up. I'm Brian Cooley with the top five tablets, iPad and otherwise. Let's go shopping. Number five is the T-Mobile G Slate. We like that it has 4G support and Android Honeycomb all rammed into one device and pre-installed streaming TV apps that work quite nicely. But then there's this built-in 3D camcorder thing, which uses those cheapy red and blue glasses. Seriously? No, the 3D on this thing is just a gimmick. Don't get misled. Beyond that, this is also kind of a pricey device, 800 bucks, unless you do a two-year hitch with a carrier who's likely gonna be gobbled up by another carrier halfway through that hitch. It's just kind of messy. Number four is the BlackBerry Playbook. A lot of folks are out there in the audience right now playing the funeral dirge, as I mentioned this one, but the Playbook is actually kind of hot. It's fast, powerful, flash-enabled, HDMI-equipped, a multitasking wonder. But the seven-inch size crams all that power on too small a stage. And it's too tied to the BlackBerry platform at a time when many folks are going a different direction. Number three is the improbably named ASUS ePad Transformer. It actually does transform. Is it a honeycomb tablet or a netbook? Yes. You see, you can dock it into a keyboard docking station that answers one of the biggest frustrations we all have with tablets, that there's no way to really type. You're always hunting and pecking on that touch screen. Now, it's pretty hefty, kind of wide, kind of thick, kind of heavy, eh, and that's without the dock. But the price is pretty good. $400 list for a 16 gigabyte model, and the keyboard dock is a reasonable 150 more. Number two is one of the very first serious iPad 2 challengers, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. This is the big boy in their line. Super thin, it runs the hot Honeycomb OS, front and rear cameras, and alarmingly powerful speakers. Now, while we love its meth addict thin lines, we didn't like how Samsung got there. The back feels cheap and plasticky and likely to break if you drop it even once. Not exactly Apple build quality. But if you're looking for something that isn't Apple, this is our go-to choice right now. Okay, before I bring you to our number one tablet, let me remind you of what may be the best value in a tablet. It's the Barnes & Noble Nook Color. That's right, it's ostensibly an e-reader. But with a little bit of technical acumen, you can do what's called rooting of this device and fully expose the Android operating system that lies within. That's not a lot of sweat to break to get yourself a real good Android tablet for $250 or less. We've got a link to the step-by-step -step directions to root one of these devices in our show notes at top5.cnet.com. Think about it. Okay, if you're really bad at things like process of elimination games, I will tell you the number one tablet. It's the Apple iPad 2. It's thin, it's got dual cameras now, dual core processor, that FaceTime video chat, and two carrier choices for your 3G models. That slick cover still looks like a damn magic trick, and it has a huge and well-vetted store of apps. That said, its screen resolution and ratio is still stuck back in iPad 1 territory. The photo quality is inexplicably lousy, and there's no support for flash. But you'll have days of battery life to ponder those few shortcomings and to be part of the vast majority who think a tablet is an iPad. Okay, before you go buy any tablet, these five or some other, make sure you check out our reviews, our latest reviews at CNET.com, because the tablet category is hot and new models are coming out fast and furious right now. For more top fives like this, go to top5.cnet.com. I'm Brian Cooley. Thanks for watching.